Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Julien de Codin. Uh, I work as a senior product designer for GoCompare. And like, uh, I guess, most of us, uh, I'm the product of my own experiences. And here is one of them. Um, so 12 years ago, when I first decided that moving to the UK was the right thing to do, I had no idea how I was going to make this work. So there was no job for me waiting in London. My savings were only enough to live on for a few months. My parents, pretty skeptical about this crazy idea. And after 15 years of being taught English at school, I was nowhere confident of speaking another language than French. But somehow, I just said something to guarantee me that it was going to be just fine. And so I made a move that changed my life for the better. But I could, I could have easily stayed home and never lived this experience. If I told myself that in order to succeed in my expatriation project, I should first get, get a job as a web developer in a creative agency right before I ran out of money, then a few years later separate from my girlfriend I was doing the move with, to then become a freelance designer and illustrator um, before, uh, which, which freed me up time to travel to Greece where I would be my wife and move with her to Wales and have a little girl together. So those are pretty high expectations and they would have freaked me out, freaked out my girlfriend would have then left me and I needed her badly because she was the one speaking English and I would have never done such a move by myself. So I also had a friend who after uni decided to spend a year in London for working on small jobs with his girlfriend and that gave me a rationing example that it was possible and not that crazy at all. So we kept it simple. Uh, we sold our car, our furniture, I quit my job, freaked out my parents, and we jumped in the Eurostar from Avignon to London, St. Pancras, in September 2006. And the rest just happened. So we kept it simple is really what, all that matters here. Uh, unfortunately, many great ideas, expectations, dreams fall into the same trap of raising expectations too quickly. The problem is that when we really believe and care about an idea, we're also eager for it to be great, successful, receive the most praise quickly. And uh, in my recipe, in my, my recipe, in my experience, this is a recipe for not for failure, but worse for actually doing nothing. So lately, my, my role as a senior product designer at GoCompare has been to put together a design system to facilitate the implementation of design uh, with front-end engineering. In a nutshell, a design system uh, works as the single source of truth for all your UI components um, that design and engineer feed into, so everything you build can be reused many, many times, so you don't have to redo the same thing over and over again. Um, and a good example of this, uh, the uh, an application of design system uh, would have been last year when Google Compare went through a rebrand exercise. So I was responsible to make sure that by the 24th of July, 2017, go compare websites and the multiple products will reflect the new brand. And one key element was the logo change to swap from the old logo to the new logo. And that technically is pretty simple. Uh, you change an asset and a bit of styling around. So we put together guidelines to explain you know, the different engineers to how to do it. But because the logo was in so many places with different code base, different environment, different teams, some internal or the external, we had to repeat this very simple task many, many times. We ended up in a very complex process to manage. Uh, altogether, it took us 30 month days of engineering to make this simple change happen. But of course, if we had this logo integrated in the design system as a simple component, then we would have made this change once and able to um, release it in multiple places at the same time, which would have reduced the amount of engineering time by 90%. So I knew it was a great idea and a no-brainer really to implement a design system for GoCompare. And likewise, I knew it was a great idea and a no-brainer for me to move to the UK 12 years ago. Uh, but again, there was, no, there was no textbook or method to guarantee me it was going to, to, to work. But in both cases, I followed a simple process to focus on the, um, on the simplest uh, elements of this emerging system rather than a fully featured vision. To, to then aim for this, for this system to grow iteratively through interconnection relationships so the most complex pro process could take part. I've iterated this, um, this approach through a variety of things I've achieved over the last 12 years from expatriation, freelancing, making illustration, or designing the digital products. 
So today I'd like to share with you how I've uh, consolidated this approach into a simple system to enable any, anyone to make any things simply happen. And to introduce this system, here is how I turn a dream into a reality. So 2012, uh, I moved from London to Wales to live with my partner. Two years earlier, I started to become a freelancer uh, because I wanted to break away from web development and become a freelance illustrator. But it was hard at the time because everybody knew me in London as a web developer and it was easy to get freelance web development contracts and I could not afford to uh, just, you know, not work to pursue my creative plans. So two years later, with a bit more savings in the pocket, um, and so that this change of scenery, where else would be the perfect opportunity for me uh, to, re to go for my dreams. So I started writing a plan of action for the next six months, everything I should do to uh, become an illustrator. Uh, I also knew that a day-to-day -day behavior would be awesome uh, to do, so I put together what I call a sexy routine, uh, basically what I should do daily, weekly, monthly, uh, to make it started from you know, going, going for a swim every week to work on a personal project every day, to go to networking events on a monthly basis. So I had, I had a goal, I had a plan, uh, so I got started. And the first thing uh, was to do, so that's, that's I got the time, and the idea was that effectively I was designing my, my dream job, so Julien de Codin illustration, as a product. The first thing was to get clients. So I spent days creating, packaging, and then sending uh, promotional mailers to a list of prospects. Wait a few weeks, make some uh, phone calls, which were really, really fun, as you expect. Uh, and I, it, it was great. I mean, I got a lot of feedback from, from these phone calls and these people. Um, eventually, I got a feature in the magazine, which was nice, but no job. And that was disappointing, but expected. My plan was clearly staying you know, on a monthly basis. I will have to do commercial mailers, promotional mailers. Uh, but obviously I didn't. I got discouraged by this lack of results straight away, and because the lack of earnings was starting to show, I went back to do web development jobs, which was boring, but um, safe at the time. Eventually got illustration commission coming in. I did a cover for a local magazine. I did some product illustration for a friend in Paris who was launching his food delivery startup. But then something happened is that doing illustration for a client project for, for money was not as fun as when I was doing it for my own project. There was something that was not, you know, um, following like tricking my style to make, to respond to a client brief or fit within a commercial uh, environment was basically different for, from the reason I started doing illustration in the first place. I just wanted to draw stuff. I wanted to express myself as, uh, use that as a free way to express, you know, m m myself. Um, also, I, I aim to get all the cool features of being an illustrator first. When I moved to Cardiff, I got myself a lovely creative studio, uh, which, was, which was great, and you know, I aim to get all these lists of clients, but I've done that right just before I was comfortable with my craft, and uh, how, you know, if I knew which market I was going to promote myself and, uh, and how, and if I actually would like to be an illustrator um, in a full-time basis. So that left me still being freelance, doing something I was not enjoying so much. I was lonely, missing working within a team, and uh, handling all the aspects of freelancing was taking its toll on me from um, promoting myself to managing clients, projects, and producing the work. So after my body told me that it was time for a change, eventually bad anxiety kicked in, I looked for a full-time role um, and started at GoCompare as a UX designer in March 2014. So we are the product of our own experiences. We always want to try something new to get better results. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But we always learn. So if our own experiences define who we are, then we will make a pretty great product, right? If we are a product, of course. I've based my system on this idea. So my system always starts with the idea. So that's the thing that pops up in the middle of the uh, night, in the middle of a conversation, or in the middle of a shower. Uh, basically in the middle of something, and this is a thing that is too good to ignore, and I will stick around until you decide to do something about it. Um, the idea helps define the goal and the why. I had the idea to move to the UK with the goal to learn English because I wanted to grow happier and more independent as uh, an adult. Uh, I had the idea of a design system for GoCompare because um, with the goal to make it easier to implement product because of the need of the business 
to build better product faster uh, to, to thrive in a competitive environment, right? But it takes courage and patience to pursue an idea and to convince people that this idea is a great idea. So if you don't care or believe in your idea, then no one else will. So care is the heart of the system, pumping the ideas through the whole process of turning it into something tangible. In his book, Don't Make Me Think, Steve Crack said that the fact that the people who build a site didn't care enough to make it easy or simple enough can erode their confidence in the site and the organization behind it. So as people, we do take action because we do care about ourselves. We care about um, having a great life, performing at work, getting recognition for our hard work, um, getting great social interactions, basically you know, being satisfied with our life uh, in general. Um, so again, if we were a product, we will then make sure that we, provide, we always provide the best experience uh, to our audience. With my background in engineering and design, I naturally cared about getting the design implemented correctly because that would make everyone work so much easier, right? And we wouldn't want to build better product with less effort and in less time. So it struck me how much of a no-brainer that is. And it struck me how much of a hard sell it is to organize, to, to convince an, an entire organization that uh, this is a good idea. So as I, as I was managing the initiative, I got into reality on getting started, and this is when you want to make things comfortable for yourself. So design systems are a pretty big thing at the moment, and uh, looking at many examples online uh, is both inspiring and overwhelming. So, I was managing the initiative and I, I tried to formalize my vision by writing notes, uh, put together backlogs, I ran hacks with a few resources we had. And uh, while myself trying to get hands on with the technology and the tools, we were thinking for both design and engineering. And that didn't work. Basically, by adding complexity of something already complex, uh, we were aiming to spend all our time heads down in the process. And without, without even answering the fundamental questions, we needed to get started. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't fun. If something isn't fun when you start, it's unlikely to happen down the line as you add complexity. Comfort is what makes the system smile. Removing the complexity that is not necessary, create a comfortable environment for yourself and for everyone involved, and don't overprocess it. Process is good when needed, but if not needed, process will hurt. The illustration work I enjoy is of the playful type. So in 2012, I started a personal project called Characteron. The idea was to draw a unique character and provide every day because I wanted to draw more character better and I thought that every day I had its own character. Um, in uh, 2016, I published Characteron number 387. So I missed a few days, had a few long breaks as well, but the idea worked out. And the reason why it worked out is that from the beginning, I followed a very simple set of rules. I was going to draw no more than 30 minutes each day on my little Moleskine sketchpad, always in my bag with me, in black and white, using my you know, big pen, uh, and then uh, scanning this in Photoshop and automatizing the export into a Tumblr. Pretty simple. And this, this lightweight process in the like core and it helped me for the days I didn't have time, I was not in the mood, or I was just tired. Along the way, I tried a complex version of character, and I tried to add colors, I tried to do them on my iPad, all this stuff never last. Basically, every time I was adding complexity to uh, the process I loved so much, I was breaking the, 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 the flow um, at the project. So, so I kept it simple. The brain of the system is there to keep things realistic. Be honest about what you can achieve. Use the skills that are available to you now to do something now. Keep it simple again. Um, the big vision for the design system was taking over the feasibility of the project. Uh, I, you know, so many people were very, very keen on, the, on seeing the final product. And I can remember, remember how many times we talked about something that would be so easy to do once the design system will be ready. Of course, talking of design system in the future attempts was never going to make it happen. So we accepted that we didn't have a lot of time and resource uh, to do it all at once and broke it down into small pieces with short-term deliverables, the one we called uh, deliver by next Friday, such as buttons, color, color swatches, form elements, logos, and icons, and, and so on. 
Um, again, we, we were only working on this as a side project, so um, we, you know, with few engineers and, and, and designers involved, so we could not, there was no point aiming for more than this. Um, we were also wanted to make sure that we were building something that would serve its goal for it to be used and uh, answer its audience problem. So by having these small pieces available early, we were then able to test them on uh, real life scenarios with our key audience, designers and engineers, and then learn from those, iterate and improve right from the beginning. Enable the cool features by focusing on the boring ones first. So that sounds a bit lame, but it's actually really, really important. Um, so enabling is, the, is what holds the system together. Uh, this is key to make things happen, and unfortunately is too often ignored in favor of quick, but not necessarily great results. From birth, we start from a very open, but solid platform with basic, but essential features like being able to eat, to sleep, to see life in simple shapes and form. This is our minimum viable product. And without these basic features, uh, the next evolution of ourselves wouldn't stand a chance, right? The cooler feature, like you know, talking, walking, socializing, uh, all expect that these basic features are available and reliable at all time. So the basic features enable the cool features. Um, when I joined GoCompare in, in, in 2014, uh, I was the first UX designer uh, to, join, to join the company. And uh, that became very obvious as I was trying to communicate uh, intricate user interface designs and interactions to the engineering team for the home engine journey that I was redesigning. The, the focus at the time for engineering was not so much on front-end implementation, um, so I knew that just providing design with not, without any direction was never going to work. So I mocked up guidelines to document the designs and sat down, you know, uh, communicating that, sitting down with the engineers, and we managed the first few releases this way. It was okay, but not necessarily quite frustrating because not, not matching the vision, the team worked so hard to shape up. Um, also, as we were making changes, we also needed to change this, and this is very time consuming and not manageable at all. So we looked for an alternative. Uh, with my workmate, we spent the day running an interface inventory of the design we just made, breaking down into simple things and ended up with this wall full of post-its with everything we could name from icons, uh, form elements, buttons, colors, etc. Um, we then coded this simple element into a simple website using best practices starting from, you know, from blank sl sl slate, and then use this website to communicate, you talk in the same language, between these two, from design to engineer, engineering. Um, and the, where the first Go Compare Web Style Guide was born this way. Uh, and because we built the, this kind of atomic level of elements first, we were then able to create more complex components easily, and then eventually fully featured high fidelity prototype with all the stuff we, we built. Um, so the style guide for Go Compare got released in 20, late 2014, and since then it's been used to redesign over 20 Go Compare products. Um, we, we raised you know, the quality of our implementation, design implementation since then a lot, uh, used as prototyping environments for both designers and engineers, and paved the way a few years later for a fully featured design system at, built at the core of engineering. This one. Um, Pace is the final element of the system. This, those are the legs of the system, bringing consistency to pursue the ID, um, maintain traction to the whole process, uh, but also help to uh, break down, you know, the, 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 your whole ID into bite-sized bite things that you can actually achieve uh, while keeping it enjoyable and, and, and relaxing for yourself. Um, so doing something every day is the best way to get better at something by doing, spending 30 days, 30 minutes each day uh, on my drawing my little characters. I managed to do nearly 400 of them. Uh, by having no choice but speak English, uh, when I moved to UK, I managed to become fluent in under six months after trying to learn this uh, school for 15 years. And building elements after elements of the Go Compare uh, product journey enabled us to redesign over 20 products and eventually embed design and UX at the core of the organization. So for moving country, changing career paths, learning a new skill, um, to, be, to introduce a better way to build digital products, disruption is necessary. And in my experience, disruption is more likely to happen um, by doing something about an idea that I care about, being 
uh, pulling a process that is, I'm comfortable with while being realistic about what I can achieve and enabling this ID to scale at pace. This is my own system, my own simple system for everything I do. But it might not be yours. There is no textbook, and the best approach might be different for you know, everyone, every project, and every context. Um, so my suggestion would be to, um, to learn from your own previous experiences, big and small, professional, personal, success and failures and turn them into your own simple system um, to, to make this thing that you really care about simply happen. So these huge mountains of expectation will turn into gentle hills of proud achievement. Thank you. <laughs>